Well, I'm really excited to be with you all today. And I um, just got to get, catch the tail end of Jen's session. She's a dear friend and colleague of mine. I have known for many years and I'm sure she dropped many knowledge bombs your way. You probably already have a pen and a piece of paper, but if not, it sounds kind of old school, but I would recommend taking one out because this session is going to be very, very interactive. And sometimes you might be like, you mean, please don't ask me these questions because they're hard. You have to be in the mood for them. So I'm going to give you a lot of tools, resources, and prompts for really starting to create some space for yourself to turn inward and check in on the different things that drive you and how you want your work to work for you. So thank you so much for having me. We're going to get into it. So grab that pen, piece of paper. If you need to grab some water between sessions here. Go for that now as well. Okay. I think it's loading and we're good. So our conversation today is on doing what you love, finding and living your passion. And now the word passion has been used a bajillion times and there's conflicting schools of thought about whether your work needs to be something you're passionate about or not. But the framework we're going to go through today, you can use this and apply it to any area of your life. So maybe you're content in your industry, your type of role, but you're feeling dissatisfied and like you're missing something in another area of your life. This can be a framework to use to explore what you might want to tap into elsewhere. So this will be um, a lot coming your way, but it's a tool you can come back to all throughout your life. I'm really excited about it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about why this concept even matters, uh, what your perspective is on the topic. And then we're going to go through with these prompts, with these frameworks to kind of explore ways that your work can work for you. Then we're going to talk about how to after today, move into action to create a plan to start to explore this in more, in more detail. And then of course, time for questions and you can ask questions all throughout too. So I just want to manage some expectations. Funny little anecdote that's related. When I went to college, I studied elementary education. Basically, I loved my third grade teacher and I wanted to be her. And so I decided I'll study, I'll become a teacher. And then my senior year of college, convenient timing, decided it wasn't really the right fit for me. <clears throat> and truthfully, I think I knew in my gut a little longer than that. But for many of us, we let this fear paralyze us. And so this conversation today is just that first point. When I went to that career coach, I, I mean, I was 21 years old, however, you, however old you are at that time. And I expected that they would just be able to kind of tell me Here's what you can do and go forth. Here are all the answers. We're not going to get there today, especially in this short of a time, but this will start the wheels turning in the right direction. So just so I can get a sense of where people are coming from, I apologize if you've already done this today. I was just able to jump in, but I'd like to get a sense of where you are in your professional life. Are you just finishing university? Are you younger than that? Are you mid-career professional? And tell me in your own words, why are you present for this conversation today? So I would love to check in and just get a sense so I can tailor my messaging to all of you and, and where you're coming to this conversation from. Mid-career, career changer. Thank you, Samantha. Mid-career, just laid off. I'm sorry, Jen. I know that's a very overwhelming time and just kind of naming not for you. Recently joined mid-career. Um, also, so... You might think I sound a little cheesy, but a few of you laid off because it's such a mo an emotional time. If you feel comfortable connecting with one another, you can create this structure, this accountability together and with someone who gets it, with someone who knows it. So that might be something um, that could be a resource and another tool for support moving forward. So a lot of mid-career here, early career professional, um, okay, career changer, looking to see after being a stay-at-home mom. Yeah, I see that a lot, Laura. Thank you all. Mid-career early. So we've got a good range here, wanting to shift roles to align with my values and skills. Sunny, you're still in my thunder here. That's exactly what we're going to talk about today, how to get those values and skills discerned, discovered, and articulated so then we can figure out what those roles are. Uh, pivot into tech. Mid-career is trying to do free freelance. We want to get back to the grind for our company. Uh, second career already. Okay, we've got a good range here. Thank you all for, for sharing. And 
we're going to cover something for everyone today, no matter where you're coming at this from. So why, why are we kind of even thinking about the concept of loving your work? And if you want to throw in the chat, throw in the chat why that should or does matter to you. Um, and if you've had this before, what was that like for you? I would love to kind of check in instead of me just saying, here's why we can think about this. What's the impact you think that would have on your life? Why is this concept of having work feel a little less like work important to you? And if you've had that before, let me know. Time is precious. I want to use it wisely. Beautifully said, Laura. Absolutely. I want to make a difference in spaces and on issues that matter to me. Yes, yes, yes. Amanda, I'm miserable. Almost every job I've had, spend too much time there and I hate it. Yes. We only have so much time on this earth. I'd like to enjoy and feel useful. I mean, I feel like these should be their own quotes that we put out into the world because this is, this is important stuff. Living my purpose. I think we, I think the statistic is we spend a third of our lives at work. And once you get a little bit more into life, you start to realize, like so many of you said, how precious this is and how you might think, okay, this is just this part of my life. But we know, especially with working remotely, especially over the last few years and what we've been through, and this has ignited a lot of this awareness for people that it's just not worth it to be miserable, to dread, get the Sunday scaries, alarm clock, kind of ugh, that weight on you. So definitely a lot of people on the same page here. For a long time, I was passionate about my role, got burnt out. So actually, that's a really important thing to note, Cheryl, that we can burn out doing what we love. And I think that gets talked about less. So burnout's kind of my jam. I talk about that with my career coaching clients. I do workshops for organizations on this. And we need to find that Balance is a tough word because I don't think it's this stable thing, like a, you know, a scale. It's this finding our footing to even whether it's the spectrum of not loving our work or really loving it. How can we have it be a part of us and not what defines us? Think about how many times you've been asked, what do you do or what do you want to be when you grow up? That is right there, identifying that that is a main way that you are oriented and categorized in the world. And we are more than just our job. But it takes a toll. Okay. So let's take a look. Cecilia, I have a daughter, a four-year-old and she spells her name, or I guess I spelled her name the same way. So nice to see you. I want to be intellectually challenged, not just doing a boring job. Don't want to exchange my sanity for a salary. I want to see if I could save this chat. I have so many just beautifully worded things here. So thank you all for sharing. Now, who here has heard of the concept of flow before? You can do a reaction button or you can throw in the chat the word yes. And if you've experienced it before, throw that in the chat as well. So the concept of flow. I've got a heart, reactions. Okay. So for me, this is the framework that I use with a lot of people. If you haven't heard of flow before, it's a psychological state or term for when work, well, I should I separate it from work. This is where I get a little into my own world here. So it's a psychological state. You can kind of geek out, get, geek out on this a lot in books, uh, research articles, publications, but it's this concept of when we're fully, fully immersed in an activity and we lose track of time. It's something where we really are connecting and present and whatever the task is, it, it feels lighter. It feels all encompassing and joyful and easeful in some ways. It might be challenging, but there's this intrinsic drive to keep doing the thing. And hey, if we can get work to feel like this, days are going to go by a little faster, right? We might have less dread going into that. So this is a little way to frame it. It's this sweet spot between, and a couple of you mentioned, I want to be intellectually curious and challenged by my work, but also not have it drive my sanity out the window. So it's this sweet space between being challenged, being kind of immersed, but not overwhelmed. And this connects to the term eustress, which a lot of people haven't heard about before either. And it means good stress. We need this to move up to and rise into the occasion personally and professionally. And this is where growth happens. So my goal for you today is to have this kind of framework to think about, even if you don't do any of the other prompts that we go through, start to have this lens that you can evaluate life with to say, where where have I felt flow before? Where do I feel flow? 
day to day now? And with that, is there a way to tap into this more in my professional life? For me, I'm going to raise my nerd flag here. And Jen, I know, has the same flag to fly. Resumes. I've been doing this for 16 years and I am in the zone. And most people have a visceral reaction when they think of editing resumes. But for me, I am immersed. I love doing the formatting of all the things. And that for me is slow. So that's why I can do it this long and still have it be a joyful part of my work. So moving into this framework, I want you to think about here's where flow exists. This is what I use with all my clients when they are trying to think about and brainstorm, or even there might be something chirping there on your shoulder and you thought, hmm, maybe I would want to do this, but then life is lifing and imposter syndrome things come up and we, we quiet that noise, quiet that voice. This can be a framework to evaluate that and see if it has legs and also brainstorm other opportunities for your work. <clears throat> so I call it VIPs. And it's not just me. This is something a lot of career coaches do. What are your values, your interests, your personality, and your skills and where they intersect? If we can do work, a couple of you mentioned, I want to do things that are impacting people that I care about, are addressing social justice issues. I mean, if you can bring that into your work, how beautiful is that? Same thing. We can use that with our interests if we're subject matter wise, actually intrinsically motivated by the topic. We're going to be more likely to tap into that flow. Same thing with all of these. We're going to walk through how to double click on each of these areas today to start to give you more of what I almost call like a cheat sheet or a checklist to evaluate and brainstorm opportunities from. You can say, this. these are my non-negotiables. Here's what matters. Now, how do these stack up against things I've thought of before? Or how might they generate ideas for other types of opportunities? I will say, after doing this work so long, I, I have heard, uh, I want the perfect job or my dream job. I'm trying to figure out my dream job. And I just want to create a little less pressure for you to think you need to find that. There is something less flow-like about every type of role, but the goal is, can we split that proportion or that ratio to be much more flow and ease than the hard stuff? We're going to get into these prompts and exercises, and again, you have to be in the mood for this. So if you're thinking, Aileen, I've already absorbed a ton of information in this summit today, I'm, I'm hitting my max, totally understand it, but you can come back to this anytime. I'm going to throw this in the chat. You can make a copy of this for yourself. Hold on. Classic where I think I had it in my copy here. Okay. So this is a values exercise that you can start. And I want us to spend a couple of minutes on this today. And should be good. So it's in the chat. Get your pen and piece of paper, or if you want to do it on your screen, go for it that way. When, when we start to think about these things, we're in our heads a lot, and it can seem really disjointed, discombobulating, all of the things, because we're so, so close to it. This is a way to start to get out of your head and start to put pen to paper on what are those values. Someone says, you should do something that lines up with your values, but how do we just name them? This is a tool to do that. I'm going to stop talking. I might even play some music if that's okay, Akiana. Uh, and people can spend like, say, five minutes on this and then we'll process together. All right.
about one more minute here. Okay, everyone, if you feel like throwing anything in the chat, you are more than welcome to of what came up for you there. No pressure. We're going to kind of have some space to think about putting this all together uh, at the end as well. But even just this picture, thinking about having a little space with specific prompts to think about it, are you starting to feel like that that thread is that's so tangled is starting to come untangled or just like you can actually find where the pieces are. Um, this is step one on this VIPS framework. I'll give people a second if they want to kind of note or name anything for themselves. And then we're going to get into the interest piece. I know it's a lot of thinking, especially in the afternoon after so much. So as a reminder, you'll have access to all of this and the replay after. So I'll, I'll move forward for the sake of time, and then we'll kind of create some space for more questions and brainstorming together at the end. So with the interest piece, what we want to do here is not censor or edit ourselves. Let, like, let's throw everything against the wall and see what sticks. And later, we can discover and discern what's just a personal interest versus something you're passionate enough about that you want it to be a part of your professional life. And my favorite part of that prompt, that values prompt is what we didn't have a ton of time for today at the bottom, make a list of what you're doing personally, professionally, and are you feeling like there's alignment there? And sometimes we have these light bulb moments with that prompt of, man, X, Y, or Z is a huge value of mine, but you know what? I thought I'd stay in this job for just a few you know, a year and then they got the promotion and da, 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 and I didn't even really reflect on that this is not in alignment with the values I wanted my work to orient around. And then that's the motivator to take action. So I'm going to share a bunch of prompts on this next screen. Just pick one for the sake of your sanity and of time. Take a look and start to kind of journal out what resonates for you. And there's some more resources to look at this in more detail, but pick one question from here, read through them, see which one feels most exciting to you to answer and start to jot this down for yourself. We're going to do only just about a minute here because, again, you can come back to this later, but just start to let it flow and see what comes up with one question. Okay, I'm going to move us along, and I know I'm kind of whizzing through pretty deep soul-searching questions, but you've got that uh, homework you can do after to reflect in more detail, and I want to make sure if anyone's just not feeling the bandwidth for this deeper level of processing that um, there's something for you to kind of move forward through as well. So jot down those questions, jot down any takeaways from the values and interests. We're going to move into next up. <clears throat> so 
optional homework there. As I mentioned, you can dig deeper, work through all of those questions uh, in the slides that you'll have that access to. The link that was on that last slide has some other prompts for other self-reflection as well. And you can kind of look through and see if anything else speaks to you too, if you feel like it. But right here, as I mentioned when we first started off and you all so generously shared where you're coming at this conversation from, lean on one another. That's a beautiful thing about the She Geeks Out Summit is these are people in a similar state as you and they're coming, they're wanting to learn, they're wanting to do the work. So can you even look in the chat, even potentially throw in the chat if you want an accountability buddy? And I know you're gonna have networking time later. Maybe this is something you seek out to say, Anyone want to kind of dig into this stuff with me and just be a sounding board? And then you can start to build from there. As I mentioned before, sometimes just having this lens to look at life with, as you move through the rest of your life, even just anecdotally, you're going to start to potentially notice, hmm, you know what? That was really fun. And it's not a big part of my work or it's not even in my professional life. And I do more of this. And then you've got that thread to pull on. I'm getting cheesy with the quotes, but I do think for this bigger picture way of thinking about doing what we love, it's helpful to kind of have these more inspirational ways to approach something when we're feeling uninspired by our work. So if you have ever had that thing where, ooh, that's it, that's why I'm here. We wanna do more of this in our life, in and outside of the office. So looking next at the P and the S for VIPs, Personality, throw in the chat or throw a reaction if you've ever taken the MBTI, the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator Assessment, this personality assessment. Now, some of you might have bad memories of this where say you took it in high school or something like that, and then you were told you're supposed to be or do a certain thing. I am certainly not advocating for anyone to approach using any of these tools in that way. All of these prompts are Ways to just learn more about yourself, to quiet that external noise, and then use that as your framework to see what could be a good fit. So a couple of people have not men, not taken it. Cecilia is a yes. Uh, Laura used it to used to administer this in her job. So I'm sure you've seen some things too. And Pam has used it. So if you want to do a very informal version of this, so this is something I'm trained in, you can take an actual really evidence-based, researched uh, MBTI assessment. But you can also go on this website, 16 Personalities, and it's a vanilla, uh, more approachable version where you get the gist of it. But my nudge for you on this is if you do that approach, when you, whenever you take the Myers-Briggs assess, Myers type ind indicator uh, inventory assessment, this is never something that is just here, here you are, this is who you are, take it and go forward. Anyone who's trained in the assessment, you walk through the results and you say, does this actually ring true? Because we are complicated human beings. So you might be in a certain mood when you take the assessment. And then when you're processing the results or seeing what that website says, you might think that's not true at all. So validate that for yourself if you take it on your own. And it's really about this theory that we're all born with these innate preferences, just like handedness. If you break your, say you're right-handed and you break your, your hand or your arm, you're going to have to start with writing with your left more. So while you were not proficient before, you're going to start to get better and better at it. Same thing with our personality types. We are surrounded by life experiences where we have to operate outside of our natural preference or tendency. So it starts to get a little blurry the older we get. Because we think, oh, sometimes I'm this, sometimes I'm that. It just means you're well-rounded. We want to pause and say, what's my default preference though? Do I get my energy from other people or do I get it from myself and then be able to engage with the world? These are the ways to think about this. Strengths Finder. You can do this on your own as well. So you can work with a coach or you can buy the book and then the assessment comes with it. Especially for those of you who, I mean, I think is important for everybody, but if you've experienced job loss or you're feeling burnt out, this is so, so helpful to take a strengths-based approach to thinking about what you want your work to look like for you, because it's really, really hard to name our strengths for ourselves. And 
we want to, you're going to read job postings, you're going to do all the things where you think, oh, I don't have this, or I wasn't selected, I'm not good enough. Having a really uh, intentional way of naming and knowing your strengths and being told, yeah, you have these can really be helpful for the mental health aspect of this process. And then lastly is skills. You can do this in a couple of ways, but it's similar to our values and our interests. It can be hard to name them when we're put on the spot. So a couple ways to approach thinking about your skills with that VIPS model, check in with yourself, check in with others. So ask your colleagues, what do you think are, what are some skills that you've seen me demonstrate in my work? Family, friends, uh, even looking at past performance reviews, that can be a nice starting point to think about what others have said you're really good at when we have trouble naming it for ourselves sometimes. But a tool that I use with my clients is called the skill scan assessment. So you don't have to memorize any of this, but basically it's an online card sort of 60 different skill areas. And just because you're good at something doesn't mean you want to do it all the time, especially for those of you who mentioned looking to make a change, looking to make a pivot. You're probably very good at what you do, but you don't want to do it anymore. So you look at this and you rate the different skills based on what you prioritize being a part of this next role. And similarly, you might not be very skilled at something, but you're really curious about it. You're really drawn to it and you want to develop or grow and have a professional growth edge there. You kind of look at all of these areas and then you've got this additional puzzle piece for that cheat sheet or checklist to evaluate and brainstorm opportunities with. Um, I want to pause and see where people are at in the chat. Uh, haven't done it, but I've heard MBTI called employment astrology. That is awesome, Carolyn. So, <laughs> excuse me, getting over a cold here. That's why I'm clearing my throat so much. Ah, that is chef's kiss. That is perfect. So with that, I know it's a funny joke, but also part of why I mentioned that disclaimer in the beginning is because the way this used to be used in the past was that it's take this, be that or you are this, so go, that's the de predetermined path ahead. And so I like to say, this is a piece of the puzzle, but literally in every single job in this world, every different personality type can do that job. It's just a matter of if you're operating outside of your default settings, so say I'm extroverted, which shocker I am as I animate with my hands and talk on and on. Uh, I, if I were in a job where I'm staring at a spreadsheet and computer all day and not talking to anyone, I can do it, but that is going to burn me out and drain me if I'm not aware of it and then not doing things to get that extroverted part of myself met. And so I share that because I think it's important to not have these self-limiting thoughts and just to know, yes, some are going to baseline set you up to be feeling more of that flow, but everyone can do everything. Um, Cecilia, a fun team building activity. Yeah, I, I run sessions before when I worked in higher education for, I mean, a lot of communication challenges and issues. And honestly, when I did the training, it's, it's intense. It's a lot of information, but it helped me understand my partner more too, because some things he does made me feel kind of murderous. <laughs> and then I could say, okay, this is just his setting where he's coming at it from. And now we can meet in the middle with that understanding can come a little more patience too with the people around us and with ourselves. So what do you do with all of this information? Say you've got that clarity on your VIPs. How many of you feel like you have a sense of what you might be interested in? So throw yes in the chat. If you have things you're, you're thinking about or really clear on pursuing for this next opportunity and throw in the chat, say, nope, in in brainstorming mode if you're just really knowing you want to make a change and not sure of what's next so i want to see where people um, are landing just on this so that brainstorming mode so we got some clear yeses brain two brainstorming so far okay for brainstorming mode people and I'll talk about how, if you're clear on what you want, how you can use some of these tools too. But for, for brainstorming, how do you take all this information then and start to come up with new ideas or evaluate things that you might've already been thinking of? 
Step one is LinkedIn. So when, even with the skill scan, it'll come up with sample ideas for you of here's, here's types of roles or industries or fields where people bring in those skills. So with that, you can then start to reverse engineer and say, okay, let me look at what types of jobs, what those job descriptions, descriptions are, what people's backgrounds and paths are who do them, how do they describe their work? Uh, and you can start to get more data and information. You're going to have some gut reactions. If you read a job description, you get a sense of what it really entails. A lot of times you have that visceral reaction. No, that being said, a lot of people are kind of terrible at writing job descriptions. So having conversations with people to say, what does this really look like? And how does your day-to-day -day flesh out can be that ultimate way of getting that gut check too. Uh, Laura shared, I have the gut feeling of what I'd like to do, but still have uncertainty pop up. So Laura, this is a perfect way. Take, take this, look at your VIPs and see the thing that you're thinking of. How does it stack up? Does it pull in your values? Does it feel interesting to you? Can you use skills that you want to use? That can be that little kind of whack-a-mole of the uncertainty. And then also having conversations with people doing that can help you gut check, okay, is this really what I think it is? And we can dip our toe in more and more and get more data to evaluate these things. Um, okay, so that LinkedIn does have a tool called Career Explorer, where if you go to LinkedIn Career Explorer, it'll come up and you can play around too with pulling in these different VIPs, pulling in different industries you're interested in, and it kind of helps you workshop and brainstorm different opportunities too. So if you're in blank slate mode, you can start to use that as another resource as well. I do Jen mentioned chat GPT. So I am a chat GPT newbie, only a few months in kind of playing around, but it's been a, a really interesting tool to use with my clients for exactly this. I'll, I'll we'll bring up and um, in, ask it certain things about the thing you want in a job. And I'll also say, so someone was exploring product management. So I would say, can you tell me what are the different types of career paths and roles within product management? Gives you those and gives you a little blurb of what those do. Then we can say, how do these line up? How do these not? Okay, this one seems like a service support specialist, something like that, product support specialist. That brings in my people skills. Okay, now let me look at who does this for the types of organizations I'm interested in. Hmm, can I talk with that person, learn more and ask questions that come back to your VIPs. If you know one of your values is not living at your job, hopefully that's most people's value here, uh, you can ask questions about, so can you tell me more about how your organization manages busy season or when's the last time you took a vacation? So you can start to suss out, can your values be in action at that type of opportunity? And you wanna get a good swath of data because it might be different organization to organization, team to team. Um, I asked ChatGPT, what other position can I qualify for, qualify for as a senior recruiter? Yes, so some people are already dipping into the ChatGPT model. Career Explorer is another. Also looking on LinkedIn, doing an advanced search, and I'm happy to walk through this too and do a screen share. Some of you might be on LinkedIn, but not super versed in all of the nitty gritty search criteria. Even for the free version, you can do a lot. So if you type in that job title, and get specific, say one of your values is <clears throat> um, healthcare technology or, or disease prevention. And you know, Whoop is a company that is on your target list because you're looking at these biometrics and it's helping people to start to think about how they can pay attention to their health and then be proactive. Okay, let's do an advanced search on who works at Whoop, who does XYZ role. And then let me talk to them and find them there. But also what are those paths? What job title did they have before? What did they study? You can, without even talking to another human, start to learn more that can influence your path ahead. Okay, good old Google, of course. There are career field guides and ONET. So ONET is, I'm not gonna lie, it's a little old school, a little clunky of a website, but there's a lot of gold in there. You can literally filter types of roles, like have it brainstorm for you and you can put in, these are my interests, these are my skills, these are the types of fields I'm thinking of. And then it's almost like online shopping. If, if you wanna get a sense of what say an accountant does, you click on it and it tells you, here's the typical 
scope of work. Here's what skills are required. Here's what typical paths in education are to get there. But then it also, the gold mine is, it'll say similar roles. And it's, I think of it, yeah, like online shopping, but for careers. So huh, some of those things are interesting, but let me check out this other wall that pulls in similar things. So you can use that. It all comes from this place of being clear on our bits first. Career field guides are many colleges and universities, their career services centers put these guides together, but they can help people of all ages. So if you're, especially for those of you who mentioned you're really looking to make a change and pivot, you're just not sure what types of roles exist within a certain field, industry, whatever it might be. You can Google this. Uh, many of them are public facing. So Northeastern, I think is one that still is public facing. You could type in Northeastern University Career Development Center Career Guides. And I used to work there. <clears throat> I mean, tons of information. Here's the paths, here's types of industries, all of that in one little nutshell, usually like a one pager. So that can be helpful as well. And I already alluded to this before, but starting to talk to people. So once you start to do, so step one, what really matters to me? Step two, brainstorming or gut checking or cheat sheet evaluating how the ideas stack up against those VIPs. Step three, if you get to this point of, okay, I'm ready to learn more. And I also want to know, could I make this leap? What skills or trainings or whatever it might be might help me bridge a gap if I'm making a big pivot? Talking to people and asking them is going to be the ultimate goldmine and longer term beneficial to your job search if you stay on that track. Uh, and so other ways to think about testing, exploring, can you go to conferences that give you more information on this? Can you, uh, this again sounds a little old, but shadow someone. Can you I'm sure there's YouTube videos, like a day in the life of a software engineer, whatever it might be, there's more information to gain and ways to dip your toe in without making that full jump right away if you're feeling a little wishy-washy. All right, let me check the chat and see what questions we might have here. Where do I find this career explorer? Yeah, um, it says, <laughs> it's not a looker, but I love own it. Thank you, that is perfectly worded. It, you, when I pull it up for clients, they're like, Aileen, what are you doing? And I say, stay with me. They haven't updated the aesthetics of it in a couple of decades, I think, literally, because I started using it in 2007. But there's such good information there. And it can be a really good place to generate those ideas. Uh, Laura asks, where do I find this career explorer? Google LinkedIn Career Explorer. I'm not sure of the exact web address and feel free if anyone does it, throw it in the chat. Um, but it's their this kind of subsection of LinkedIn where they have it and it's not known about or talked about a lot, uh, but it can be really interesting to learn. Okay, lots of information, lots of deep soul searching questions, prompts, things like that. I wanna create a little column in the chaos here and have you feel empowered about how to move forward with all of this yourself. So it probably is pretty clear that this takes time. When I work with people, I say for this self-exploration, I, I do that skill scan. I have a whole self-assessment guide where I say, we want to do this in a, a little bit of a longitudinal way. You can't expect your brain to go into all this, especially again, if you've been burnt out, if you're in a toxic work environment, if you're just tired, you're a human being overstimulated in this world. So set up different pockets of time and lean into your natural flows and where you know you're less overwhelmed in your week and carve out those pockets and set up an appointment with yourself like you would a date with a friend, uh, a doctor's appointment and show up for yourself and make it pleasurable. So this is hard work, but can you Treat yourself with your favorite latte. Can you get that cozy blanket that you like? What is something that will make it even more enjoyable and do it in different spurts? So that's step one. And just recognizing if you're kind of frustrated or overwhelmed by the process, that that is normal and to take a beat and then come back to it. And this is that flow. What are your vips? Which things align or don't? Can we research them? Can we dip our toe in and get those relationships? Uh, created to learn even more from real people. And the other thing to think about here is leveraging both the community of this summit as well as creating structure. This is a very structureless process. So 
can you put this on your calendar? I just mentioned that, but I'm gonna go down with this ship because when it comes to these big things and throw in the chat, if something's been noodling there for a bit, you've wanted to make a change, but then the can gets kicked and not in a judgy way, but in a life is lifing way. And this is daunting. So I start to explore a little and then I shut down. I'll geek out and kind of really rabbit hole on it, but then I don't come back to it for a few weeks. Does anyone have that experience? You can throw a reaction or throw in the chat. That is normal because our brains want to avoid that discomfort. We want to kind of conserve energy. So a couple of people, yes, yes. And this is the way to hold yourself accountable. And I don't know if there's any fans of James Clear's book, Atomic Habits, but even two minutes, do one question, spend two minutes, walk away, come back the next day, same thing. You have to start something to build upon it. Yes, Laura, as you can tell with my cough, sick kids, I relate to that well. The momentum part is challenging. So can you connect? Can you connect with each other? Connect with a friend, a family member, even if they're working on something else. Think about the gym. We can walk anywhere. We can do push-ups anywhere, but we go because we want to be around people focusing on and doing the same what thing. It, it's human nature. So can you build that for yourself as well? Collaboration. We talked about that as well. Cheryl, I'm in slow search mode. Slow is still steady though. Doing it, that's still uh, something to be proud of. And it takes that, that time and attention, that consistency. I have a number of other resources that I'm happy to share for how to create all those things too. And a lot of them are free um, as a Kind of thank you for spending this time with me. And I didn't want to overwhelm with too much information today. Uh, so if you are able to, my thank you will be this cheat sheet. If you found something useful, supportive in this, I would love to hear your feedback. If you hoped that we would have talked about something else, I'd like to know that too. So all, uh, if you want that kind of thank you cheat sheet there of other resources, tools, books, uh, assessments, things like that, this takes less than two minutes um, as my thank you. That'll come up for you on the screen. I don't collect emails, so you can skip the part if it comes up for you still to say email. So either scan this or go to the website and type in flow, finding your flow and let me know again, what was helpful? What were you hoping we'd cover? And we have time for covering some of that in the final wrap up too. And then that additional resources handout will come up instantly for you. Throw in the chat too when you're done and then I'll know and feel free to then also just start prompting your questions and we'll have time for those. As soon as you're done, just throw done in the chat. You can start asking your questions and I will know to scoot along. All right, I have one private message done. Anyone else who's done, just throw it in the chat. And also you can start asking questions. I'll move it up. Looks like it doesn't open on iPhone. It should uh, with the, pic the camera app. And if not, that website talk period AC slash the link isn't working. Done though. Okay, Akiana, Carolyn, did the, the thank you come up for you? The, the handout? I'll send it along anyway to Akiana and you'll all have access to it. But thank you so much. And sorry, strange, strange technical stuff, but I'll, I'll make sure everybody gets it. Um, and my favorite kind of cheat cheat takeaway from that is uh, a lot of colleges and universities, some of you might know it, but I'm a terrible businesswoman. I'm like, go 
take advantage of free resources. I want everyone to know about them. And then you shop around, then you take what you get from the free options and then explore other ways of getting support. Most colleges and universities have uh, at least one career coaching session for free for graduates. And they don't advertise it because they want to make sure the emphasis goes to the students. But if you just look at their career services center, you can send an email, call and ask. Even if they don't do free coaching, which most do, at least one session again, uh, they'll have those career field guides, uh, job search resources, things like that, that are good starting points as well. Questions on any of, oh, you were able to download, Tiffany. Thank you. Okay. Always paranoid about tech stuff. So I'm glad to know it came up for you, but I'll still make sure um, that everyone has that as well. Questions, things that you want to make sure we have time to cover. Alma says, yes, we're about to say career services have opened up more services to alumni. Yes. Yeah, you may, you've already paid for it. Yeah, when I used to work in career services in higher ed for uh, almost a decade before coming out on my own, um, I'd meet with graduates all the time. And most centers have a max. It might be three sessions per person per job search, but you can still get a lot done in that short amount of time. And of course you wanna make sure it's a good fit and you feel supported, but why not explore it? The price is certainly right. Uh, I know we're just about at time. I don't see any questions coming in, feel free. I know this is big picture stuff. So if you think of something later, feel free. You can message me, email me. And my biggest kind of takeaway here is that just quieting the noise and remembering you know yourself better than anyone else. So when things feel overwhelming, daunting, and kind of chaotic, taking that step, up, step back, coming back home to yourself, and trusting that little voice that's telling you the way um, can be really invaluable. So thank you so much for taking the time to connect today. It's so lovely to hear from all of you, and I hope you have a great rest of your summit. Thanks for having me.